All right, day two, Aero Kit Test at Barber Motorsports Park here in Birmingham, Alabama, RobinMillerRacer.com. Uh, not any real surprise, Will Power on top. He was fast yesterday, he's quick this morning. KVSH second and third. Rookie Stefano Coletti second, Sebastian Bourdais third. They're working well together. Uh, Bourdais won a race last year. Obviously the storyline, the first three cars, all Chevrolets. Four tenths of a second clear of them is Graham Rahal, the fastest Honda. He's fourth. Right behind him, Joseph Newgarden, who went from Honda to Chevrolet in the Ed, Ed Carpenter-Sarah Fisher merger. So he's been quick the last two days. But I, I think what really is, when you talk to the Honda guys, like Ryan Hunter Ray, we talked to him, he said they're just kind of scratching their heads a little bit. They're not exactly sure where they're lacking. But when he heard that Will Power was almost running wide open through turn one here, he said, you're kidding. And I said, I don't think he was lying, but you know he's a race driver, he might have been. So before we go any further, we want to hear from the KVSH duo of Stefano Coletti and Sebastian Bourdais. All right, the best way to make a first first impression is a fast impression in IndyCar racing. Stefano Coletti, he's been second quick all morning here at Barber. He's never saw the track before yesterday. Kid, hell of a job. Just talk about coming from GP2 and jumping into an IndyCar and what the transition's been like. Well, let's say it's it's a Delara, like a GP2, and uh, it's a bit heavier, and uh, it's got a bit more horsepower. So uh, it didn't take so long to get used to it. I think the most difficult thing here was the track, because the track is quite difficult and there's a lot of up and down and a lot of very blind corners and and you know it's pretty physical as well so we got there step by step and I think we did a good job today. We've heard a bunch of guys a bunch of veterans say 10 laps in they were like oh my god is this steering heavy I'm gonna change my steering have you had to mess with the steering yet? Yeah we did we tried like I started with a lot more caster then we went down on the caster but I didn't like it so I put it back so I guess it's gonna be harder to drive but that's if the way I like it, I just have to make my arms a bit stronger and then I'll just I'll just drive it. Okay, you're 25 years old, you had won five or six races last year in GP2. Everybody said, okay, your next step's Formula One, but as good as you did in GP2, it's still, you still have to have money and was this a much better way to get going, get your career going again? Yeah, let's say that Formula One is a lot, a lot of money. I mean, it doesn't really matter what results you do in GP2, in the end you still have to have big sponsors to get up there and I think this series is very very competitive it's as competitive as Formula 1 I think when you see the drivers in front they're very quick very quick drivers so I, I always wanted to continue in uh, in single seaters and open wheel and I didn't want to go to GPs or anything else so of course it was always a very good option to come over here and I always wanted to come over here because I started to look at this option back in 2009 so that's a few years back and actually, I'm really happy to be here right now. Do you, you're still a kid. Do you, do you have any memories of Alex Zanardi, the last Italian that really made a big splash here? Well, I know Alex. I know, I know him personally, and he's a great guy. And uh, of course, I remember his time when he was winning, and he's he started introducing all the donut stuff on the track. Right. <laughs> that was really cool. So. Uh, That's right. A, ma a young man that knows NASCAR didn't invent the donuts. It was our boy Zanardi. <laughs> yeah. No, but he's. He's a great guy, and uh, and I hope he's going to come see me some races this year. The uh, the other thing is, is when you think about all the guys like Justin Wilson, who had some form, you know, he ran minority for one. He just thought this is the best chance for a driver to show what he can do because you don't have to have a Mercedes. You know, it's there's not that big a discrepancy. Well, it's different than Formula One. I mean, Formula One, if you don't have the car, there's nothing you can do. I mean, if you drive a car that's going to be three seconds off, the best you can do is maybe being 2.8 seconds off. It's not you're not going to do big difference. When here, all the cars are the same. It's just a question of setup and and feeling with the engineer and and understanding each other and that what makes you fast. So of course, there's a lot more possibilities to show your talent and to show how quick you are. Gotcha. All right. You might want to get familiar with the way this kid looks because you're going to be seeing a lot of them this year in 2015, the IndyCar Series. Sebastian Bourdais, third quick in the morning session, quick yesterday. Scott Dixon says, ah, I don't pay any attention to test times. It makes no difference. It only counts in two weeks in St. Pete. What's your feeling about test times, kid? Yeah, I don't care about the test times as long as I'm on top of the time, time sheets, you know, it's always the same thing. Now, realistically, yes, it's not that big a deal because if you want to post one, you know, you, you go out at 10 o'clock and bang one on, you know, the freshest temperatures. But um, I'm pretty happy with the car and, and we managed to, I think, post one around noon on new tires, uh, which makes me feel pretty good about it. And uh, I like the car, so let's go racing. 
I think last year, you know, you, you got back in victory circle where you belonged, and, and I think, I don't know, the last two or three years, you've, you've, it looks like the old Sebastian Bourdais. Can, can you put into words how, how, how much it means to be with the same group and the same engineer? I think people maybe don't understand how important that is in this whole thing. Oh, it's crucial. I mean, you have very little testing in the winter, and uh, the car is very complex, the level is very high, so there's no room for mediocrity, you know, and, and right now you got to be on top of your game, know exactly what you're doing and when to do it. Um, sometimes, you know, look back on what you've done, what's worked, what's not worked, and so if you don't have any continuity, you got there's, there's no, you know, step at some point to get you out of the water. So it's uh, it's really critical, and uh, hopefully it's going to pay dividends this year. Well, you took a chance, though. You were telling a funny story yesterday about your dad coming back here because you weren't you didn't you didn't come back here with Team Penske. But now you've kind of worked your way, and now these guys, I think they're, you know, I, I think we've watched this team grow with your with your leadership. I mean, you know, TK won the 500, so I, I'm not going to say I grew the team, but I think we definitely, uh, we, we, we got rid of weaknesses. I might have created some others, because we clearly didn't do, get it right on ovals, but we were working on it. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful. I think there's a really high potential. Uh, Stefano joined us and, and he's showing that the cars make great progress. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going uh, to be a fun season. Talk about your teammate. I guess you get, you're, you've known him for a, a while. And did you help lead him this way? When he, did he ask you quite, you know, I mean, he's another guy that Formula One looks like his goal, but it's not really realistic financially. Yeah, well, I mean, it's always the same thing, you know. These days, you get into Formula One if you bust the doors open, you know, and so you gotta basically pop on the scene and just explode in everybody's face, and then they think you're the next superstar. And you know, Stefano's never really had the opportunity to do that. He's just kind of had to work his way through the feeder series, and and he's been very successful. He's won a bunch of GP2 races and been leading the championship, and he's. He's very clearly a very talented and quick guy, but uh, you know, obviously, money talks right now in F1, and uh, opportunities are rare. And uh, you know, he managed to make one for himself here, and I think he'll he'll show the world what, what he's capable of. Kid, does can you can you gauge the, the arrow catch yet, or is it is it fun to try and figure out what they're doing? Is it a pain to? I mean, are you trying all kinds of crazy stuff thrown at it, or is it is it? Are we making too big a deal out of it? No, I think it's a, it's a big deal, you know, in terms of what it does, at, as far as numbers and, and downforce and drag and everything. But as far as the car is concerned, it, so far we haven't seemed to be, you know, in need to make revolutions on the setup or anything. So it's it's a good surprise because we were definitely afraid of that. You know, everything you think you know kind of goes out the window and and you restart from scratch. And so far, it's really not been the case at all. So um, you know that. That gives me even more optimism because if, if you have to restart from scratch, big teams with four cars and everything, big advantage. If you don't, then you know if you were competitive last year, there's no reason not to be. So I'm you know looking forward to the challenge. Good. All right, KB Racing second, third on the speed charts. Sebastian Bourdais, winner circle last year, probably be there again this year. Robin Miller, Racer.com. Thanks for watching.